we're going to go for an overtake. <laughs> Unleashing the V8. Hey guys, it's Joel and welcome back to the channel. And as you can see behind me is my Porsche Cayenne, but as you can probably tell from the title of this video, that's not what we're talking about today. We have come today specifically to look at a car that I know lots of you have been pestering me about. Some of you have probably forgotten about and has not been on the channel, I don't think, for almost a year. But do you know what it is? Obviously you do, you've seen the title of the video. It's hidden by the massive Cayenne currently. It is of course, my 1999 Jaguar S-Type. I've not seen this car in a while. It's the rare one, remember, with the four litre V8. In fact, I was looking at Auto Trader the other day and couldn't see a single other one of these things for sale. But some of you may have thought that we'd let this one go, but we haven't. It's still here and it has just passed its MOT. So we'll talk a little bit more about what's gone into that. Um, but as you can see, it's extremely dirty, very much need of a good clean but also a good run. And now that we've got an MOT on the car, that is what we're going to be doing today. So here's going to be an update on the S-Type. We're going to go and get it cleaned and take it out for a good old drive. And I can explain to you today about, well, where this car's been and, and what's been happening with it and what the plan is going forward with the car. <laughs> soundtrack and finally a dashboard with no warning lights on it that's what we like to see isn't it <laughs> parking sensors are still working gosh I've forgotten how big this wheel was and how lovely the wood feels on it now to be honest although this is a big car after getting used to and daily driving that KN, it feels, dare I say it, small. So you may have noticed that this is not my usual filming location and that is because today we are on the Isle of Wight which is where this S-Type has been living for about 11 months. If you do remember correctly, Katie and I, my wife and I, used this car at our wedding in March of 2023. It is the car that took my now wife, Katie, to the wedding. So as I said in the content back then, this is something that we were always going to keep in the family. And since the wedding, it has been living down with my parents-in-law here on the Isle of Wight. And they have recently just gotten it through the MOT, which involved some welding, some suspension work, and a few other things that we can talk about a little bit later on. But essentially, they have kept this car alive for another year, and today, we're just gonna give it a good old run, give it a clean, like I say, and just have a little bit of a catch up on it. But it is really nice to be sat in here, actually. It has a smell, I always talk about smells with cars, but it has a lovely smell to it. It drives so wonderfully. The steering is so light, I'd forgotten about that. And it all seems to be working pretty well. So what we're about to do, as we are in East Cows and the nearest car cleaning place is just across in Cows, we're gonna to attempt to take the floating bridge today, which uh, infamously, if you know anything about the Isle of Wight, never seems to work. But today it seems to be working today. But for once, there's probably more chance of this breaking down than the Jag itself. Let's see if it gets up here. Very steep. There we go. And what this does is takes us in about two minutes across to the cow side of the estuary into the Isle of Wight and then it should just be a few minutes to get over to the car cleaning place. <laughs> Okay, well the chain ferry made it, the car started again, so that's good. This car, you've always had to give it a little bit of time to get into gear, so you sort of put it into D and then <laughs> there's the clunk, which means we're good to go. And careful not to, uh... no, it's not exactly a sports car, 
the ramp is extremely uh, I don't know what you'd say but the the angle is very sharp so it would be very easy to bottom out here I'm just gonna be a bit careful there we go and just like that we're now on the other side and we're in cows I have to say it kind of feels surreal driving this car because for a good amount of time this was the daily driver a bit like the KN is now this was the daily driver and we've been through thick and thin with this car spent probably about five grand on various bills it was kind of a tough time with this thing and uh, now almost a year later it's driving really nicely actually has a year's MOT like I say and we're just enjoying it which is really fun I also had forgotten just how effortless this V8 is in fact we're just trickling up a hill now at around 25 miles per hour and I'm barely needing to use any sort of throttle input whatsoever whereas in my KN it would be hunting gears now trying to downshift probably be in second or third gear just to get up this hill whereas this just feels so much more effortless and the ride quality too I know we're only on slower and quite smooth roads but it is a very very soft ride on this thing it's only on 17 inch wheels remember which definitely helps but this thing was totally set up to be a comfortable GT a, a cruiser and it it does that so well and I cannot quite believe how soft it feels let's see if the blind works after all of this time I think it's that one there aha privacy Right, so we've just turned up at Leslie's Motors Car Wash Cleaning Service, which is open seven days a week, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and it's definitely not open. What a bummer. I really wanted to get this thing looking nice again. The interior needs a good scrub, and the exterior definitely does. Plan B, I guess. I have to say, I do absolutely love the Isle of Wight, but this sort of thing happens quite a lot. You know, There's not that many car washes to choose from, and we've gone on the chain ferry specifically to get across here. <laughs> it actually says, open seven days a week, nine to five. It is two o'clock on a Saturday. It's definitely very much not open. Yeah, it would be nice to get this clean, but I think what we'll do instead is just drive it straight down to the south coast of the Isle of Wight, Compton Bay in particular. There's a gorgeous road down there, which actually we did a video with this car there before. But I love that road. It's actually eroding away as well, so I want to try and catch it before it completely goes, because I'm sure that will happen at some point. But we'll just enjoy driving the car today. If we do see somewhere to clean it on the way, though, we'll definitely still do that. So that's a bit of a bummer, but as Jeremy Clarks would say, it doesn't matter because I've got a jag. So in that spirit, then, I'm going to hit this S button on here. I'm going to select third, second gear, there we go, give it some beans. Wow, I've forgotten how quick this thing was. That really picks up. Let's put it back into D, because I did that just as we were entering a 30 mile an hour zone, so that wasn't ideal. Of which there are quite a few on the Isle of Wight, as you can imagine, apart from a few gems, like the military road where we're heading, where you can go up to 60. But to be honest, with the S-Type, it is one of those cars which is at its best pottering around like we're doing now. Supremely comfortable. The engine, despite it being quite an old four litre V8 with only around 280 horsepower, is pretty much underutilized all the time. And when you do put your foot down, like I just did, it genuinely does kick you back in your seat. It's quite surprising actually. Right, so why has the S-Type been on the Isle of Wight for the best part of the year then? Well, very simple reason really. After the wedding, we felt like we'd sort of done what we wanted to with this car. Certainly for me, in terms of YouTube content, I did the fuel economy run in this thing where I drove from Land's End to Nest Point on one tank of fuel. That was quite amazing. I didn't feel like there was all that much more I wanted to do with the S-Type, and I wanted to free up some money to do other things. However, we'd always known that after using this car at the wedding, we wanted it to remain in the family forever. And my father-in-law really loves this S-Type. In fact, he owned an S-Type way before I did, and he said he'd like to look after it. So. That's exactly what's been happening. He has been looking after the S-Type for the best part of a year, and he has been using it. I think he's done around 5,000 miles in the car, which is fantastic because that's what these things are for. And it does feel so good. This car's coming up to 25 years old 
this year, probably is 25 years old now, and be able to be still putting miles on it is absolutely fantastic. And he has most recently, my father-in-law, got it through the MOT. It needed some welding doing, which we always knew because if you remember about a year ago, I took this car up to the chaps at Matter Customs and we had a look at the rust and the issues with this thing. We did some replacements, but we always knew it needed new sills and, and just that being looked at. It's been taken care of now, which is absolutely fantastic. And I have every confidence that we can now continue to enjoy this thing for many years to come. There are some issues with the car. I don't know about the gearboxes on these, but whether a service is a recommended thing, it probably is. I think it could use that. It's quite clunky going into gear, especially when selecting reverse. There is a good two or three second delay before it engages. I know it's an old box, but potentially it could do with a mega flush or something like that. The driver's side window doesn't go up and down. That's always been the case. In fact, I've got a window regulator that has been sat in the boot for about a year. I just haven't had the chance to fit it, but I think that's something I should be able to do. The air conditioning doesn't work. That's something that's obviously not so much of an issue at this time of year, but in the summer is a bit more problematic. And we're not quite sure what the issue is with that. In fact, my father-in-law did take it to a couple of places over the year who both said they weren't really sure what the what the air conditioning issue was and it's probably a hose that involves basically taking the engine out to get to so we don't really have a solution or a fix for that but i've not done any investigations of my own other than that it's pretty good it did have some tie rods done in the recent mot and i think maybe it could do with a four-wheel alignment after having that work done but in terms of how it drives i mean you know, if you think back to when I bought this car a year ago, actually more than a year ago, we had all sorts of issues with the engine and the coolant going haywire. And since all of that has been fixed, mechanically speaking, in terms of the drivetrain at least, this thing's been pretty much impeccable. On the inside of the car, it could do with some cosmetic work. It could actually do with probably a new driver's seat. I think this seat is too worn to be saved. But it, yeah, it could certainly do with being retrimmed or replaced at some point but we are just very happy to see this thing being drivable to be honest because there was definitely a question mark above this car's head when that last MOT came round and it did involve thousands of pounds being spent on it and then this year it was less money and I think hopefully next year it should almost need no money spent on it to get through the MOT but yeah, we didn't always think that it would be driving for years to come, but now I really do have every confidence. We're gonna go for an overtake. <laughs> Unleashing the V8. It really picks up. I think the KN, I've got very used to putting miles on that thing, and I guess it is it is slow, that car. I think that's got a 0-60 to time of around nine seconds, whereas this thing, is I think just under seven, but it feels an awful lot quicker than that. If we go down to 40 miles an hour and I'll reselect second gear, just as a demonstration. There we go. So we're at 30 miles an hour now, 35 miles an hour. I'm gonna put my foot down. 45, 50, 55, 60. That is a properly fast car. Another thing in comparison to my KN, despite all of that hooliganery that we've just been doing, since I started this video, I reset the trip and we're averaging just over 23 miles per gallon. Now, no matter how hard I try with that KN, I cannot get anywhere near 23 miles per gallon. In fact, 2021 20, is the long-term average on that thing. So, despite this being a bigger displacement and much older, it's a little bit more frugal as well. thing the sound of this v8 is super nice as well it's not overbearing it's just that subtle raspy hint that you get from the back of the car and a little bit of a whine from the motor at the front it's very very fun also when i left this car on the isle of wight it had an abs light a handbrake warning and the traction control system was permanently off all of that has been fixed now it needed some i think it was just abs sensors and that seems to have sorted all of those issues you know what it's like with these cars they get 
a little bit sensitive when one sensor goes, it cuts out various other bits. But look at this road rod now, it's like a single track road and it's really fun to thread up here. I know I sound like a broken record, but I had forgotten one how quick this car is, but I'd forgotten how how fun it is. And it is, uh, sharp is not the right word to use. It's still a bit of a blunt instrument, more like sailing a ship than it is driving a sports car. But I guess in comparison to my daily driver at the moment, which is a Porsche Cayenne, it's really jolly good fun. And so now in front of us is the English Channel. The next thing over there would be France, I suppose. Definitely don't want to go that far. But where we are now is the military road, which in my opinion is the best road on the Isle of Wight. I believe it's a 60 mile an hour limit down here. It tracks the southern coast of the island with the most incredible views. And it's a nice windy bit of tarmac as well that's very well surfaced. So let's give the Jaguar a little bit of a thrashing. Because I think with cars like this, especially bigger engine cars like this, it does them well to be driven hard at times. So it's got the most gorgeous views in front of us. You can see the sea on the left. You can see how the cliffs are eroding away. Every time I come here, it's noticeable how the landscape changes. This is one slight issue with the Isle of Wight though, is that everyone does 35 miles per hour absolutely everywhere, even on the finest national speed limit roads. So here we are then, we made it to Compton Bay in the Jag. Sadly, the dirty Jag, because we didn't have a chance to get it cleaned, which is a little bit of a shame. If you ever do come to the Isle of Wight, I strongly recommend you come to the military road. It's on the southernmost part of the island. It's a gorgeous road, goes all the way up there. I don't know if you can see on the camera, winds all the way up through there. It's absolutely fantastic. And although, if I'm honest, I wasn't that bothered about driving the S-Type again, just driving it down here, I really enjoyed it and actually want it back. But for now, at least, the plan is not to take this car home with me. I'm taking the KN home. This will be staying here on the Isle of Wight for the foreseeable future. But hopefully, for some of you who are wondering where the car was, gives you a little bit of an update as to where it is. And it hasn't gone anywhere. We do plan on keeping this thing on the road forever. So thank you all for watching this video. Apologies, it's been a little bit rough and ready, but hopefully you've enjoyed it nonetheless. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Thank you.